Gather round now, boys and girls. Come hear a true story of Ephraim and Earl. Maybe the greatest two players in the world, the magician and the pearl. Efren slept in pool halls, hustling soldiers as a kid. We call him the magician 'cause he knows so many tricks. Came to Houston back in '84 and showed 'em how to win with a ten-dollar stick. Earl the Pearl's a power player. He can really hit the ball. Makes crazy shots look easy. With a cue that's six feet long, and when asked about his antics, he'll respond in that light drawl. When I play pool, I act different. That's all. So many good ones to choose from makes choosing pretty tough, especially when so many of them I know y'all would love. Like when they played for three days straight for a hundred thousand bucks. But here's my favorite one: summer 1995 in Reno at the Sands, the finals of the Regency. One match for ten grand, a race to thirteen, a few hundred friends and fans packed like sardines in the stands. The first eighteen, they were neck and neck, the best you'll ever see. At nine to nine, Earl got out of line and Efren took the lead. The magician on the hill, the pearl behind by three. One rack would have him beat. Efren broke, came up dry. Earl made one and hid. The magician went to play the nine with that famous kick of his, but he left the pearl a chance to tie, and that's exactly what he did. Now Earl's breaking for the win. Come on, Earl. Well, on the break the two went down, and the pearl tried to duck, but he left a shot for the magician who got up and made the one. But Efren clipped the nine, got funny on the five, and stood there stunned. He thought his run was done, so he tried to hide behind the six and leave Earl safe. But the five rolled by, way up the table, and flooped the eight. His hands held high. Earl thanked the gods, and Efren smiled about the odds. If it were anyone but Efren, you probably think they lost. The magician took a good look at that impossible shot, then he kicked the ball two rails across and made the five up top, and the crowd went off. And they're on their feet, screaming and cheering, and Earl's clapping too, just shaking his head in disbelief, like. What did he just do? Meanwhile, Efren made the six and seven with shape, and the pearl just grinned. 'Cause no one needs to see that last ball in. Earl shook the magician's hand, held it high above his head. They gave the pearl a microphone, and this is what he said: "You know, I'd rather have it end like that than win the tournament. And I've played all of them, and 
and he's the greatest. And they gave the mic to Efren, asked him what he thought when he was dead in the water and looking at that shot. Well, he laughed. I got lucky on that one. So that's the way it ended, and Poole would never be the same. The Pearl should be commended for his sportsmanship that day. There's a lot of talk already about how the game ought to be played, but here's what I have to say. I've seen a lot of matches, if there's one thing that I've learned. There's just no way to really say who's the greatest in the world. Earl needed Efren, and Efren needed Earl, the magician.